Hello everyone, welcome to my Don't Starve house. You are wondering how this is possible? You could make stuff like it through the power of the y-axis. Just like how Don't Starve lets you build in two directions, you can also build upwards through the use of commands. In today's video I will show you everything you need to know about the y-axis with timestamps in the description if you want to skip ahead. Before I show you how to build walls, I recommend you download this coordinates mod, which I'll link in the description. Basically it tells you your X position as well as your Z position in the world, which is going to be very helpful for what we are doing. You can use this command to build walls out of walls. Basically, this part is the thing that you are spawning in. So because I want to build my wall out of stone walls, I will type in wall stone. If you don't know the file name for something in the game, you can always check the Don't Starve wiki where they show the file names for every item and you can then spawn them in. Now all you have to do is change the position in the command. This is where the coordinate mod comes in handy. It tells you both your x coordinate and your z coordinate, so you can just slot those two numbers into the command. The y coordinate represents how high you want to spawn in the walls, so because I want it at ground level, I will set it to zero. And there it is, the wall spawned exactly where I want it, it to be. Now to make an actual wall, just repeat the command but increase the x by 1. Then just do the same thing but with a higher y, and congratulations you are successfully building walls and don't starve. There is a faster way to do this but we'll get to that later since the command you have to use is kind of complicated. So let's move on to what I like to call the void. You may be wondering what happens if you spawn in a wall, but at a negative y. Well, it spawns the wall underneath the map, but somehow even though it is underneath the map, you can still see it through the floor. This makes for some pretty good pixel art you can do since you can always see it under you without it actually blocking your way. But what if you wanted to go beneath the map? The easiest way to do this is to just teleport yourself there with the console. If you set your Y to let's say 20, you will teleport into the air and slowly fall to the ground. This is also how you can stand on the walls you built. But what if you used this command and teleported yourself downwards? By setting the Y to a negative value, the game will do this to you. It doesn't really seem like anything actually happened to you. You could decrease the Y value even further, but that would only... Wait, what the hell was that? For a brief second? You could see the void below the map, before the game teleported you back to the surface. But we can go further with this command, because if you enable the first person mod, you can actually see the void in all its full glory. This allows you to see the whole world from a different perspective, from underneath the map. Rather than just teleporting yourself upwards every time you want to go up, you can instead build stairs which can do the job for you. The highest wall you can climb is a wall that spawns at a y of negative 2.2. The highest step you can climb is one of 0.7. This means you can create a staircase by starting at negative 2.2 and going up by 0.7 for every step that you make. Be sure that your staircase is at least two walls wide, since it is much easier to climb one when you get pushed between two walls. However, you may notice that going up these stairs is kind of slow. That's why you should make each step smaller in order to climb the staircase faster. A good height for each step is 0.5, since you can walk at a pretty decent speed when it is set like this. If you are going to make a staircase of 0.5, make sure the first step is at a y of negative 2.4. Imagine that walls have a height of 2.9. Assuming you want each step to equal 0.7, you can take away 2.9 from 0.7 and you get negative 2.2, the position of the first step. Essentially, a wall at negative 2.2 is the equivalent of a step of height 0.7. But because you want to have the steps at a height of 0.5, you take 2.9 from 0.5 and end up with negative 2.4. Therefore making negative 2.4 the position of the first step 
if you want to go up by 0.5. The lowest possible step you can make is one of negative 2.8, which is the equivalent of going up 0.1 every step. It is the smoothest staircase by far, but it is also the one that takes up the most amount of space. If you set a wall to a height of negative 2.9, it will have no effect when you walk over it, because it is actually underneath you. If you want a shorter, more simpler version of what I just said, just make your first step at negative 2.4, and then increase the y by 0.5 every time you make another step. And just like that, you have stairs that can lead you to places unreachable before. Now, this all assumes that you have a gap of 1 between each step. If you make the gap smaller, you can then make a functional ladder and don't starve. It's as simple as it sounds. Just make the y difference between each step 0.5, and the Z difference between each step 0.2. As long as you don't lose focus, you should be able to easily build a ladder and don't starve. If you mess up, you can actually hammer and destroy walls that are above you, so don't worry if you accidentally put a wall in the wrong spot. Using these stairs, you can make bridges that go over the water. No more garbage boat bridges, these are the real bridges. Look at my perfectly functional bri- Wait, what? It died? That's right, if you're not in god mode, walking over bridges will actually kill you. It doesn't really make sense, but it happens. To solve this drowning problem, just enable god mode, which will prevent you from drowning when you walk over the water. You can also do this over gaps in the caves, but the difference here is that you don't actually need god mode to cross the bridge. In order to walk over the edge, your wall will have to have a height of at least 1.5. Anyways, what I really like about these bridges is that you can actually move boats underneath them. However, make sure your bridges are at least 4Y high, otherwise this will happen. The walls will get pushed by the boat. It looks kind of strange, but it is the reason you want to have bridges at least 4 high over rivers. Otherwise, boats will be able to completely destroy all your hard work. Speaking of boats, if you have one under your bridge, when you try walking over it, you instead get kidnapped by the boat. This can be used as a secret exit in sky bases where you can instantly teleport to the ground, without anyone ever knowing where you went. Now it's time for some Y-axis experiments. First of all, can you block flying mobs, like dragonfly, if you build a high enough wall? A large amount of people said yes to this, but it may surprise you to see that dragonfly will actually just walk through the walls like a ghost. Dragonfly doesn't have any collision, so she will just fly through walls like they're not there. Another fun fact is that a lot of mobs seem to forget you exist if you walk up a bit. For example, this pigman I just hit quickly loses aggro if I just walk up these stairs. Not only that, but you can also fire at enemies from here, and they will never even know it was you. Although the darts don't really function properly if you're shooting down at targets. To finish off the video, I will return to this command that lets you build extremely quickly. So for this part of the video, I didn't really know how to explain it with a script. So here we are in my hellhole of a world, and we will try to do just that. Let's say for whatever reason you wanted to build a wall that's 5 by 3. What you would normally do is just spawn in a wall, increase that, increase that, and slowly but surely build your 5 by 3 wall. And what I just did there was all done manually, but I can do it faster with a command. With this long command, let's just start at the beginning. 4x equals 1 to 10. Basically just means it's gonna run the command 10 times and, the, and x will be equal to 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, until it reaches 10. So because I want to build a 3 times 5 wall, I'll just make 10 equals to 3. And y is the same thing as x, I'll just make y equals 1 to 5. Then we just change the axis. The y is obviously 0, because that's ground level. For the x-axis, you just write x plus your current x-axis. 
which will put it where you are and you do the same thing for the Z axis y plus 60. Remember this y does not actually mean the y axis it's just the y that we have over there that's 1 through 5 and if we just click it bam we just did what we did there but with one command. So what's going on here when x is 1 1 plus 79 is going to be 80 so it's gonna spawn a wall at x of 80. When x is 2 it's gonna 2 plus 79 is 81, so it's gonna spawn a wall at 81, x of 81. And just keep going like that until you make a square. You can also make walls going up this way. Let's say we wanted to make the same wall of the same size, just going up. We'll just make the x 83, because that's where we are. Y plus 60, that doesn't need to change. We'll just make the y equal to x which is the same as x plus 0 and you can follow the same logic for making stairs if you make our x to 20 and our y to 20 you can make a big staircase we just set our z to y minus 21 and our x to x plus 23 because that's our position then the y is the only complicated part. You divide it by 2 since we want steps of 0 0.5. Take away 2.9. And boom, we have a staircase 20 long and 20 high. It's uh, pretty big. I may have spammed them everywhere. After discovering you can... What the hell is that sound? Okay, that was strange, but anyways, you can make stairs this way. If you don't want to make them 23 long, just remove the X part. And you have a one tall wall, if you want that for some reason. So yeah, that's how you use commands. It'll probably be a bit clearer when you try doing this yourself. It's very easy to mess up with this command and spawn random messes everywhere, which can get kind of laggy. Anyways, that is the end of the video. I recommend you download the first person mod if you're going to play with the y-axis, since it lets you see at things better and inside buildings. I hope you have fun building in 3D Don't Starve, and with that said, thank you for watching and goodbye.